I know some of us don't call him until we need something. My God, my God. But sometimes I just long to be in his presence, so I just have to tell him I need him. I need him every minute, every second, every hour of the day. I need him. Hallelujah. Driving well, last night gave me, or, and early this morning gave me time to just talk and commune with God. And I feel like you give me a few minutes to just flow. I got a prophetic thing that I want to do this morning. I, I hear God saying to do something. And I'm going to ask you to stay seated to our, when I think about the people of God and the fact that the enemy likes to attack us. And the reason why he loves to attack us is because we look just like our daddy. When you just look at somebody and say, you look just like your daddy. See, we were created in the very image and the likeness of our daddy. We were created in the very image and the likeness of our father. So because he can't do anything to God directly, because you're the next thing, you're the heir to the kingdom of God. The enemy does not like you, and so because he does not like you, he tries everything he can to attack you. But when you look at somebody and say, greater is he, so you got to understand that something on the inside of you that the enemy is trying to bring. It's the greater that's on the inside of you that the enemy is trying to attack. Greater is he that's within me, that he that is in this whole world. Look at somebody here and say, greater. Well, I was I was sitting there and I was, as I was driving, I was just praying and I was talking to God and God said, God, God gave a prophetic thing that just to share with the people of God. And I just want to know, and, 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 and as I begin to say it, because this, this is how God told me to told me to say it. Because we're struggling, because we're going through things, because the enemy is attacking us, because some of our faith is not where we, we need it to be. Your faith needs a shock. Yeah, uh, when they when when, when the heart stops beating, they have what they call fibrillators to try to shock the heart back in place to get the rhythm to move in. Sometimes the enemy comes and he attacks our attacks our life, attacks our body to get our faith off rhythm. And I heard the Spirit of God said, our faith needs a shock. God, 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 needs to, God needs to show himself to you like he done the very first time. And every now and then, we ought to ask God to take us back. We ought to go back to that, to that place, to that place where, where, where you fell in love with God. To that place where you trusted God like never before. To that place where you said, for God I live and for God I die. God has to take us back. And I thought about this because the enemy attacks us and a lot of times this is the time where, 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 where folks like to give up because the attack is so great. Yeah. The reason why the attack is so great is because of the greatness that's on the inside of you. Yeah. That's why the enemy, that's why the enemy is trying to attack you because he cannot mess with God. So he wants to mess with God's children. So he wants to take up. And I thought about it. Is there anybody in here got having financial problems? Because that's you. I want you to stand to your feet. If that's you, don't don't be afraid. Because God can get ready to do something for you on today. Is there anybody in here having any marriage problems? You got any marriage problems? I need you to stand. You got to be serious about it. Because help on the come when you acknowledge that you need it. Uh -huh. Anybody have having in a home problem? You got issues in your home. You're dealing with your kids. You're dealing, you, you, you're dealing with your community. What about on your job? Anybody having any problems on their job? Have some problems on your job. Amen. What, what, what about those of you in your health? Anybody having any health issues? Come on, I, I need you to stand that you have it in the health. In it. What, what is it? Anybody struggling in their walk with Christ? I know I'm saved. I know God. I know I'm saved. You, I know I'm saved. You saved me a long time ago. But every now and then I have some struggles. I have some. I have some issues. I, I, I have some. Uh, anybody got any habits that you know you've been trying to get rid of, and yet you say, no, you can't get rid of on your on your own. I want you to stand. This is what the Word of God told me. What God told me to tell you. I need you. I need you to look, grab somebody right next to you. Oh, uh, because see, joy 
John chapter 2 tells us, it says, in the last days, this is what the Lord said, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Look at somebody and say, all flesh. Your sons and daughters, I just need to grab somebody, grab one person, because I need just grab you one person. Grab one person, find somebody, grab. Don't ever try to hold each other. Hey, grab somebody, grab one person, because you get ready to speak into somebody's life. They get ready to speak into your life. Grab somebody. Joel chapter, uh, in Joel chapter 2, it said, In the last days, said the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So I said, All flesh. So your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yeah. The old man will shall uh, see, uh, see visions and young men shall dream dreams. Now, this is what God told me. Yeah. I want yeah. you, what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands. I want you to grab one person, grab one person, speak, because you want to speak in one person's life. Grab one person, grab one person. Look at that person. I need you to look, look at them, hold their hands and look at them, because you get ready to prophesy over them right there. Everybody that stood up, stood up because there was a need in their life. There's somewhere where the enemy has tried to shake the very foundation of their faith. But God told me to speak, told me to tell you, you'll speak this thing into their lives. When I, when, I, when I count the three and I tell them to say it, but they're going to say, I need, I need a war cry. I need a war cry like, like number four. But God says, speak. I want you to speak into the lives of the person whose hand you hold. Person whose hand you hold. I almost, I almost think that we need to do something a little different. Because if you're a family and you're connected, I need you to move right. Grab somebody that you don't know. Grab somebody that you don't know. I want you to speak like I need you. I need you to speak. Well, we're gonna we touching and agreeing for Brother Taylor over there, Father, in the name of Jesus. We decree healing right now, God. In the, in the name of Jesus. We come against the enemy. We try to attack his body. Try to attack his back. God, I need you to restore strength. Wait! Hey. 
saw in the natural is God's children struggling. But what I see in the spiritual, Hallelujah, freedom. Your future looks bright. I see the change falling off you. I see the weight falling off you. I decree and declare that you will not leave here the same way you don't leave here. The Spirit of God is in this place. And the world is closed. And God said, You look better now. You got to see that yourself. You got to see the picture. I see myself in the future. And I look better. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Come on, put your hands together and celebrate. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, give God the praise. Come on, child. Put your hands together and celebrate. Oh, he deserves the kind of praise. Tried to lay down and 
couldn't lay down. They tried to sit up, couldn't sit up, lay down on the floor, that didn't work. Put two chairs together, it didn't work. Nothing seemed to work. And I sat up from 7 to 10 and I nodded off like 5, 10 minutes in between. And about, about 10, 30, 11, I'm up and I couldn't sleep. We, we decided to leave by 3 o'clock in the morning. I sat up and watched the color purple. So it was time to go. I told God that I'm going to need his help to get back home. And God did just what I asked him to do. So, I'm on grace this morning. I'm on grace. Grace and mercy helped me yeah. to get here. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And grace is lingering with me now. Yes, Lord. And so you give me a few minutes to say what the Lord has to say. My wife asked me yesterday, she said, do you need me to speak? And I said, no, God has a word. I got this covered. This is not the first time that I've been in this shape where I've been driving all night because when I started this ministry, my brother can tell you, I would often be gone and have to drive all night to get back for church Sunday morning. So I, that ain't nothing new to me. But as long as he give me the strength, I believe that God would say something to you Amen. that's going to bless your life. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. <clears throat> Would you kid and wife just stand to your feet for the reading of the word? Psalm chapter 1. Beginning with the first verse. It said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of, of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Look at your neighbor and say these words to your neighbors and neighbor. Neighbor. Get rooted. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give, give, give me a few minutes to just share what the Lord has said to me. A blessed man does not just wait. He is planted. God bless the feet of those who are blessed. <laughs> and we need to understand that blessing does not just happen. They come because you make a decision to be planted. You were planted at a specific time and a specific place to wait on God to manifest blessings in your life. And so you got to understand that God is allowing this time to allow your faith to go deeper, to get your roots down deep. What, what, what you are going through now, God is allowing you to go through so that your faith will grow deeper. All of the storms that you have gone through and are going through is to strengthen your faith. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't going through for nothing. Uh, it is God's desire from the very beginning of time and even now to bless you. 
Uh, and, and when it seems like you are not being blessed by God, it is not that God has not blessed you. What has happened is that you moved from where God meant for you to be. Amen. Uh, I need y'all to listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not that God is not blessing you because it is God's will to bless you. Yeah. According to Jeremiah 29 and 11, God is thinking of ways to bless you. It's not that God does not want to bless you. The problem is, is that you have moved from the place where God meant for you to be. You see, a lot of times when things get a little hot or the wind begins to blow, you want to get out of the way of it because you don't want to be affected by what's getting ready to happen. But there are some times that God will allow you to be planted in a place, and it's for a specific reason, but because you don't like the pressure that's coming against you, you decide to move your half yourself from one place to the next place, and when God comes looking for you, God comes for looking for you at the place where he plants you, but because you don't have the ability or the strength to wait, you move from where God has planted you, and you miss out on what God has for you. Help us, help us. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, 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 you see, if you are not rooted in the word of God, when the storm comes, you will find yourself being rooted up. Can, can I give you an example? Help us. You are given instructions to be at a specific place at a specific time for a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody that's looking for a job, they, they tell you, okay, the, the person that you talk to on the phone say your interview starts at 8 o'clock uh -huh. at such and such place. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They give you instructions to be somewhere at a specific time and at a specific place. Uh -huh. and, we, and they, they have you to come, and, but they, they have you to come to a place in which they were going to hire at least 10 people. You got to the place that you were supposed to be Based on the instructions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you knew that you were at the right place to receive a job, but you noticed that you were all you were there all by yourself. Uh -huh. What happens is that we didn't really listen to all the instructions. Help us, help us. You were told, uh, let me just help somebody right here. You you were told to that you were going to be hired for a manager position at McDonald's. Only thing you heard was McDonald's. And, you, and, and they told you to be there at 8 o'clock. True enough, you were there at 8 o'clock, but you was at the wrong McDonald's. The reason why you miss out is because you went to the wrong place. Help us, help us. Uh -huh. You went to the McDonald's in the nice neighborhood. Wow. Uh -huh, because you said that, hey, I, I, I don't want to have to go. I got to drive through all the shooting. I got to go through all, drive through all the, the cussing, all the fighting and all that to get to this McDonald's. So you decide, because they told you to go to McDonald's, you decided to go to the one in the nicest neighborhood. And the instructions were for you to go this way. Help us. Help us. Help us. So when the blessing came, when God came, when God came down to bless you, God went to the McDonald's that you were instructed to go to. Uh -huh. But because you decided to go somewhere else, uh -huh. you missed out on what God has for you, has for you because you decided to go another way. Oh, it's, a, it's amazing to me how we are that we don't want to go through nothing, we don't want to go through any pressure, we don't want, want to go through any problem, we want the easy way out of things, but you guys understand, there are some pressures and some problems that God has desired for you, that he needs you to go through, not to destroy you, but to protect you. Yeah. Help us, help us. What's this, what's this? See, 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 some of you have missed your blessing because you moved from the place God meant for you to be. Touch your neighbor and say, don't move. Don't move. Uh, you remember Adam and Eve, don't you? Adam and Eve in the garden after they sinned, God came looking for them at the same spot he meant for them to be. Yeah, the Bible said that he came to them in the cool of the day every day. He never changed the time he showed up. He came to the same spot to meet Adam and Eve, and Eve but here it is because they decided to move themselves. They decided to hide themselves. God came to the spot where
where he normally comes to meet them. Uh -huh. But because they were not there, God said, Adam, where are you? Uh -huh. If Adam would have been at the place where he always been, God would have no need to ask him, where are you? And see, the reason why the some of you are so frustrated with God, so mad with God, is not because God doesn't God has forgotten to come where you are. God come to the place he's been meeting you at. You decide to move the location. And because you decide to meet the, move the location, if God is meeting you at 55, 35 Pleasant View, and you decide to go go over there on East Street, you can't fault God when God show up here. Yeah. Watch this, watch this, watch this. You must be rooted in God's word. Storms are going to come, but if you are well rooted, you will be able to weather any storm. Uh -huh. See, the devil will try to send storms to uproot you for being where God wants you to be. Understand that storms come in all shapes and forms. Storms can be family. Uh -huh. your, your storms can be finances. Your storms can be health. Your health. You must realize that whatever storm that the devil sends your way, God has built you with that storm in mind. Uh, somebody just somebody just missed that because if you understood still that reason why I'm going to the storm that I'm going through, God built it with me in mind. That means that see you got to understand. I, I told you that a storm can't kill you as long as you got your life preserved. If Jesus is on the inside of you, I don't care what storm comes up. I don't care what storm you face, you can never die in your storm as long as the sun is on the inside of you. So the storm that you're facing right now, God designed the storm with you in mind. Help us, help us, help us. Help us. Help us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somebody still missed it. Somebody, somebody still missed it. You got to understand. God's word says that he knows, he knew us.